All right, I'd like to welcome everybody to this webinar from UCD Smurfit. My name is Luke Milling, and I'm your host for today. And in the next 30 minutes or so, you will hear all about the Smurfit MBA and why to choose it, and also about the program overview. And we have a great lineup for you uh, ready. We have, besides the MBA admissions manager, we also have three students. So it's looking to be a very um, interactive session where hopefully we get lots of questions from you. Uh, if not, they are probably then taken care of already. And uh, we hope at least to, uh, to give you all the information that you need to know um, in order to possibly apply for this MBA. Now, before I introduce the speakers uh, to you, um, a couple of items I'd like to explain to you is maybe this might be your first time for this type of uh, webinar. So first of all, you um, um, are able to write questions at any time through the panel called Q&A. You can see that on your right on the screen. You can write your questions there at any time. So for the live audience, uh, your questions will be dealt with at the end. So we will uh, answer them, of course, if we can. Um, for the people that are watching the recording, you can still uh, write any questions. And obviously, they won't be answered directly. However, they will be emailed directly to the appropriate person at UCD Smurfit, and they will be dealt with in a timely manner. So you will hear back. Besides the Q&A panel, we also have a brief console. Um, you can see some buttons on your screen. Um, for example, there's a, a resource list with some useful links such as the brochure uh, or the link to the admissions page. So you can click on that later as well, and you can find more information if you didn't find the answer or possibly how to apply. So you can do that from the resource list. Um, and without further ado, because you, of course, joined to hear about uh, the MBA from the speakers, I will introduce to you the speakers. Uh, first of all, the MBA admissions manager. We have with us Jessica Dowling. Hello, Jessica. Hello, how are you? Great, thank you. And thank you for being with us. Looking forward to, uh, well, you will kick it off in a minute. <laughs> So um, on your right, well, for us on the right, on your left, we have also with us Caroline Shakur. Hello, Caroline. Hello. Thank you for joining. Caroline is a student. Um, and next to her is also another student, Eric Hormin. Hello, Eric. Hi. Thank you for joining as well. Welcome. And on your left, uh, on our far right, is Anita Puri, another MBA student. Hello, Anita. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining as well. And you will be, uh, you will introduce briefly yourself later on, I know, and you will talk about your experience. Uh, but without further ado, um, Jessica, the floor is all yours. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for taking the time to uh, join this webinar today. As I said, my name is Jessica and I'm the MBA Admissions Manager. I look after the full-time MBA and also the executive part-time MBA. So just to give you a little bit of an overview of the program itself, uh, the full-time MBA, which I'll be talking about mainly today, is, is a one-year program. It is 12 months in length and there is one intake a year. So the intake this year will be the very end of August and it runs through straight through to the next August. So it's a very intense program, but it is, you can just do it within the one year, which I know is very attractive to some people. In terms of overview of why you should choose UCD and why you should choose Smurfit, um, the school itself is uh, very well known. It's the leading business school in Ireland, and the program is ranked within the Financial Times and The Economist. We also have the triple crown of accreditation. What that means is that the program is recognized and accredited throughout the world, that the UK, a European, and a US accreditation. We're the only business school in Ireland that has that triple crown of accreditation. As well as that, we're a member of the SEMS network, and we're also a member of GNAM, which is the Global Network of Advanced Management. Um, and there's a GNAM week that takes part in the MBA, which I'll, I'll let the guys here talk about a little bit more. Um, so overall, it's an excellent program. It's world leading. You know, you can really take it wherever you want to go. Um, very much a focus on practical learning is what I would say. So there's a huge amount of group work within the MBA. It's a lot of based on case studies. So it's very much business as it happens. And it's very, everything that you learn in the classroom, you can sort of apply to a real life working environment as soon as you graduate. 
and as well as the modules that we cover and just to say it's a general MBA so what that means is you while you don't specialize as such you do get to do a full round of you know every sort of business uh, modules that you need to do so everything from human resources to accountancy to global strategy it's designed to give you a fully rounded sort of business education and along with that, we also have what's called the Leadership and Development Program. And that's really designed to bring on your leadership skills, your presentation skills, everything like that, these kind of soft skills that you really need in the business world and that will you know, really help you stand out. As well as that, we also have MBA clubs. So for example, if you have a particular interest in something, a sport or um, you know, maybe some sort of movement, you can start up a club on that. You're supported by the MBA program office, and that's a really great way to kind of get a really unique experience throughout your MBA. For the international students, we do have accommodation available. So if you were to come here, there is accommodation available on our campus. You would be sharing with other MBA students and some MSc students. So I do know that sometimes that's a concern because Dublin can be, you know, it can be expensive for accommodation, but as an MBA student, you would have that um, offer. And we also have a dedicated international student officer here. Her name is Yola. So if you have any questions around relocating or visas or anything like that, there's a huge amount of support available. So throughout the actual application process itself, you can talk to me. And then once you're accepted onto the program, we have an officer here who will be able to deal with you and help you out there. Okay, and this is just a very quick slide on the various sectors in Ireland because, I mean, the main reason to do an MBA is to get a great job out of it, I'm sure the guys will tell you. Um, and Dublin and Ireland especially is a great place to be currently in terms of employment. So, you know, I, you can see there the different um, sectors, but especially the tech sector, that would be a huge industry, especially within Dublin. Dublin is the European headquarters of ma major tech hubs like Google, Microsoft, Facebook, LinkedIn. They're all based within Dublin. So, you know, but you can see from that side there, if any of those kind of, you know, industries interest you, then definitely you can, you know, work in that industry in Ireland. And just to add that Ireland has a two year stay back visa, which that means upon a graduation, you can stay in Ireland up to two years and that's not linked to any um, uh, employer sponsorship or anything like that. So you can kind of work in your area, get the experience and then either continue to stay in Ireland or kind of bring what you've learned back to your home country or maybe to a new country. But I mean, really what you can see there is if you work for any of those multinationals, you can really build a network that you can bring anywhere. So um, that's one of the great reasons to study and live in Ireland. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hand over to our current students because I know they're far more interesting than me. <laughs> so Caroline, I'm going to start with you. Um, could you tell me a little bit about why you applied for an MBA now and what kind of attracted you to Smurfit? Sure, sure. Um, so I'm from the US, but uh, and I, my background is actually in political science and uh, languages. But um, leaving school, I actually always knew I wanted to get into an MBA in the future, focusing on uh, finding that first job in the um, program development uh, yeah. in, for various experiences. So then I was uh, actually in New York in 2016, okay. and I was uh, starting to look at different MBA programs, mm -hmm. and I actually met at uh, the Q QS, QS, QS yes. uh, <laughs> conference or, or yeah. um, exhibit, and I met with um, someone from Smurfit in 2016, mm -hmm. started chatting with them, kept in contact with them, um, but decided and went to a few events with them, learning more and about right. the the MBA's uh, opportunities, mm -hmm. specifically in Ireland, but obviously just in general. And then I was, I put it on hold mm -hmm. because of uh, opportunity I had with my company to, to transfer. Uh, mm -hmm. to Spain. And so I ended up in Spain for a couple of years, but while I was there, I recontacted, I contacted you <laughs> again and, um, and uh, was kind of uh, brought back into the focus of, of yeah. an MBA specifically in, in Ireland then mm -hmm. um, because my previous job was in uh, um, a tech platform for website mm -hmm. translations. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to get into a, um, a, a kind of cut, not cut off, but kind of shift. Yeah. Um, and rather than go through the, you know, slow mm -hmm. um, transfer with my company, I thought the MBA was a good way to just stop board, yeah. springboard yeah. and, and, and transition that way. And then obviously Ireland and Smurfit came in um, top 
of my list because of the tech side of it yeah um and all the industries that you previously mm -hmm. said um mm -hmm. and so that was that was a big factor for me going from from industry keeping keeping direction but changing um slightly um mm -hmm. to, to to allow myself more of a uh academic background in certain aspects that I felt I was missing, um, all the while focusing on future and business, uh, business, industry. yeah, <laughs> industry, industry, yeah. And have you found that the MBA has sort of helped you, like lived up to expectations has, has, and has been being based in Dublin helped with that? Uh, very much so. Uh, the one thing is, I know you mentioned GNAM and we all did GNAM. Um, oh, yeah. I, Actually, yeah, if you want to talk maybe oh. a tiny bit about what you know. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, it stands for Global Network of Advanced Networks. Network of Advanced <laughs> <laughs> um, So essentially it's a it's, um, great uh, network of top business yeah. schools around the world, um, in China, in uh, it's Germany. I think it's the yeah. Ireland, Ireland, Ireland is the, or, sorry, uh, SmartFit is the Irish partner to it. So we're the yeah. only school, yeah. Yeah, so, so some people, you went to IE in Madrid, mm -hmm. some people went to Yale, some people went to like all around. Mm -hmm. I stayed in Dublin specifically for the um, digital innovation. Um, yeah. Uh, um, it is, yeah. Yeah, the digital innovation <laughs> seminar. And, and what was great about that was we went to... Um, Google, we went yeah. to Facebook, we went to... Because they're right here. Like, they're so right yeah, here, yeah, 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 within, you know, the city. So we just stopped in and we saw the different factors. And so not only is that, you know, just in Dublin, we say it's, mm -hmm. it's part of it, but we were then in their offices and, yeah. uh, you know, I, my mentor, my MBA mentor is also mm -hmm. part of, you know, the Facebook group. So I just pop over and see, see yeah. them again, you know, right just again. really easy and, and um, mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's not... Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, but like it's really cool. So yeah, Dublin yeah. and uh, in the Texas. Yeah. yeah, well, that's great that the location kind of made a big difference because it is. And if you haven't been to Dublin, it is a small city, so it is pretty easy to get around and kind of have those relationships. And also, just to touch on um, what Caroline mentioned about the uh, mentor is what we have as part of the leadership and development program. You'll be assigned an alumni mentor, and they'll be assigned based on industry that you're interested in or you know, other factors, you, you can chat about that. Um, and then they'll mentor you through the MBA program because they've been through it themselves. Mm -hmm. And it's invaluable in terms of support and also the connections that they'll help you make. So that's something that we offer as well. So um, Eric, can I ask you about- Hello, Jessica. Hello, how are you? <laughs> Hi. Yeah, do you want to talk a little bit about your experiences? Sure. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. <laughs> so my name is Eric. I come from Indonesia. It's a country located in Southeast Asia. So like around one year ago, I was I was on the other side of this video. <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was looking at the current uh, student talking about their experience and such. So I was working at a venture capital firm uh, about one year ago when I finally decided I had this revelation to pursue my higher education. So I would like to get this MBA because I would like to advance further in my career. And I realized in order for me to advance professionally, it would be highly not improbable, but will be really difficult if I do not, if I do not have the proper uh, education background. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason I picked MBA. And when I was picking, uh, when I was choosing the university, uh, I would like to go uh, to a country where they speak English as a main language, mm -hmm. because English is not my first language. Mm -hmm. uh, we speak uh, our native language there, uh, Indonesian, and but we use it in a in a business conversation mm -hmm. setting. However, it was not that. Uh, that, what do you call it? Uh, like we only talk about it only during business, but not on yeah. a daily basis. Yeah, yeah. That's why I decided to pick a country where they speak English. Yeah. And my first, uh, my first target is the States and the UK, mm -hmm. basically, yeah. because <laughs> those two are the, <laughs> yeah. yeah, the kind of no. yeah. <laughs> However, after I did some research, uh, number one, the cost is too expensive for me. Mm -hmm. Like it can cost you like 100K plus in order to yeah. get a degree there. And most of them will require you to stay for two years, which mm -hmm. is also very high in terms of opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. Then somebody told me about Ireland mm -hmm. and I look at it as a country first. Uh, it's a very good country. The macro is good. The macro is good. Everybody speaks English there. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, then I picked the university. Uh, UCD was my top target because it's like the best country in, in the mm -hmm. whole Ireland. And 
I finally decided to make the application and finally accept it and I sit here now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that easy. Yeah. And uh, what have you sort of enjoyed most about it so far? And have there been any cha excuse me, challenges? Yeah, of course. Uh, just like I told you before, English is not my first language. So the first four months here, I was having a hard time just to adjust because I only hear English maybe on elect for one or two hours every day. But mm -hmm. here I need to speak it uh, 24 hours. Mm -hmm. uh, just like Jessica said, I live in a, a university housing mm -hmm. along with other international friends, which is a really good immersion program yeah. that really helps me understand the language much. And not only the language, but also the culture of yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's it's about the language, number one, because I need to translate everything first. <laughs> yeah. I need to, uh, understand what they say, then I have to reply something in my language and I translate it again. Like like yeah. the three steps process is really hard. But now mm -hmm. after like spending like six months here, I think I can have it like subconsciously. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and how have you found, is there anything on the MBA itself that you've really enjoyed so far? Anything you're looking yeah, forward I do. to? So maybe uh, it's something that uh, Eastern people could relate, especially in the Asian culture. Well, uh, when education is use, uh, usually is a uh, teacher standing in front of you, then you have students here just listening to the teacher say. Mm -hmm. But again, just like you said, uh, yeah. here we mostly study in groups and we usually have presentation and mm -hmm. case study and such, yeah. which is really different. So it's yeah. a really amazing experience for me. Yeah, and do you find it better learning that way? Or yeah, it is. Yeah, I think, yes. Yeah. More challenging, but... More challenging, yeah, <laughs> because you are forced to think, you are forced to speak, and you are forced to voice your opinion that yeah. way. So, and on that point, yeah. you know, no I really liked on like our first week when we had foundations week and we were all, we all had that first assignment from me for, for yeah. accounting and I have not touched accounting ever. Mm -hmm. I was actually yeah. quite freaking out, but it was that yeah. <laughs> work going to start with accounting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Things. Yeah. But we all, even we didn't need groups, we grouped together yeah. and, you know, we helped each other. Yeah. It, like that was day two. So yeah. I really yeah. liked that about group work. Yeah. And Anita, do you want to jump in there? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so I get was so hi, I'm Anita. <laughs> I'm actually from Ireland. Um, my background is in healthcare law. Um, and before coming to Snarfish, I was um, working in London um, where I was working as a solicitor. Um, so I know we've already touched on you know, the reasons for um, applying to Snarfish and, and I would agree with the reputation and also um, the extensive alumni network. But another um, factor for me was the fact that we have really small classes here. Mm -hmm. So there's only 31 in our class. Um, and I think, it, you know, having such a small class, it, it means that we engage so much more in class mm -hmm. and we learn so much from each other because we've all come from completely different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that, that's it, it greatly benefits everybody. Um, I'm using the MBA as um, a platform to change career. So um, I guess the, the careers department has, has been helping me a lot as well. I mean, um, from day one, I know we've talked about the kind of the academic side and the mm -hmm. leadership and development program, but also from week one, we've also had, um, you know, um, classes on careers. Um, we've got seminars, we've got, you know, seminars to guide us into um, kind of figuring out what it is we want to do if, if we're, you know, changing career or we have um, the careers department arranges um, seminars with um, a panel of alumni um, in various different areas and they will, you know, and, and we're, you know, we can talk to them afterwards and so it kind of allows us to expand our network and also just engage with other industries and, and figure out where we want to go um you know after 12 months and, and it's going to come around i mean we're already six mm -hmm. months yeah. <laughs> into the mba and um, you know we're more than halfway there um so yeah, yeah. no no that's great <laughs> and just one thing that i wanted to bring up as well is that we have these international trips as part of the mba um because you know dublin is like i mentioned is quite small it's quite a small country so uh something that's really important for us and is very important actually if you're applying is to remember to have uh international and like global perspective mm -hmm. so because you will be in a class with people from all different nationalities and also you'll probably even if you're working in ireland or if you work abroad like you will generally be working with very international teams 
teams um, and you need to have that cultural sensitivity and you know be, be willing to be you know very you know um, working very collaborative and everything like that so if you are thinking of applying that's definitely something that I would recommend kind of concentration on in your questions is any international experience you have or anything like that that's really important so as part of that in the MBA there are three international trips throughout the year so one we've already mentioned which is the GNAM week and as Caroline said you do actually have the option if you prefer to stay in Ireland that's not a problem um, but otherwise you can go to another uh, GNAM partner school and then what the next trip is is the international um, business trip I don't know if it has an official name I just call it that yeah. <laughs> and that's where the class goes to um, different countries and they go as a group and they kind of learn about businesses in that country now unfortunately half the class this year was meant to be going to China which now isn't going ahead it's been changed to Scandinavia but the other I would say other half of the class but I think now it's most of the class <laughs> are going to Argentina so do you guys want to talk a little bit about the trip to Argentina and what's planned and everything I don't get to go. <laughs> so I, I don't I do, we, we don't have the, the time oh, yeah, 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 for, yeah. for for week one, but we, we do we get a, an extension. Yeah. <laughs> which is what we're planning. Okay. <laughs> but do you have like so generally on these trips it's kind of going seeing businesses yeah. and things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. And is there do you know like kind of learning outcomes from that trip? Sorry, I've probably told you. We, we <laughs> don't know yet. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 okay, oh great. Okay. Keeping everything quiet until okay. then. Um, so that's so they're, so they're all going to Argentina. And then the next trip as well is in June time is the International Consultancy Week. And that's where the class goes to another European city and works with small local businesses, um, sort of their experience, or it's going to help them. They work as consultants, essentially. Um, so they go in, work with small local businesses, uh, developing, it could be anything from marketing to tech. And then once the week is over, they kind of present their findings. And that's really to give you a sense of, you know, what it's like to be a consultant, because that's definitely where we've noticed a lot of people are now going into, into working. So we want to kind of get them that experience before they, before they go into that. Okay, um, I think I kind of touched on this, but is there any challenges that any of you have found or anything that you kind of wish you'd known before starting? Uh, I think one thing for me was um, the housing actually mm -hmm. was a fear of mine. I, um, mm -hmm. I probably read too much into the Dublin housing market and <laughs> I scared myself a little too much, but um, I, I jumped in, I, I'm at, uh, mm -hmm. along with Eric yeah. uh, on campus housing, which is quite nice. It's yes, a really yeah. nice fallback, um, but I did kind of have that fear when I was originally looking into mm -hmm. it, probably more so than necessary because there are yeah. rental offer opportunities, but yeah. um, that was a big thing that I think Smurf had helped out um, yeah. placate my, my, my nerves. Yeah, and the good thing about the accommodation is as well is it's like right here. Right here. Yeah. Like see it from the window, it's you know, so it's great. You know, it's great um, just for being in class and things like that. So, was there anything, any fears, or anything that you guys had, or anything that you found? Um, mine was coming back to college after more than ten years. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea of just studying again and doing exams and assignments. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that's you know, I guess a, a positive is that I mean from day one I just forgot that and we've all been in this together and you know there's such a sense of camaraderie of, amongst the classmates like we we help each other we look out for each other we you know challenge each other it's you know and it's just constant so we, we there's just so much support that you know that it's fine yeah. we, we, we manage yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, great and is there anything further you'd like to add or anything like that <laughs> oh yes. Oh. <laughs> so, oh, sorry. Do you want to? Oh yeah. Do you want to talk about the GNAM? Oh yeah. So, so I know, I know. Um, Caroline and Eric went to. They stayed here for GNAM. Yeah. Um. So I um chose to go abroad instead. So I went to IE in Madrid, um, which was a wonderful experience. I mean, we were only six weeks into our course, so we were only settling in at the time. Um, and we had, I think the following week, we had our, two of our first exams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a little bit of a stressful time. But um, to just, go, I mean, going to Madrid, you know, we're having classes there. We were there with um, 50 MBA students from, you know, all across the GNAM network. Um, so there were, you know, exciting debates in class. You know, we, we learned about the topic um, was Europe at a crossroads. And so it was quite, it was very topical um, at the time. And we we were dealing with, you know, the the effects of Brexit on, on Europe and, and on um, 
on the world. Um, and we also, uh, I mean, on, on, you know, more exciting side of it, we had a class of wine economics and we got <laughs> wine tasting and we had flamenco lessons. And so it was, it was I mean, it was, it was a brilliant week. Yeah. I and mean, I would highly recommend going abroad, but also, I mean, Caroline and Eric have come from abroad already. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> to stay here. So you can, and if you have any sort of worries about visas or anything like that, like sometimes, yeah. if you've just arrived, yeah. And you yeah. Need to, yeah. Yeah, so you can stay in the country as well. Yeah. But, uh, Actually, yeah. getting off what you said, we were six weeks in. Yeah. We were, uh, I was talking with another classmate, and we were very, uh, you know, protective when we were hearing all your fun stories. Around yeah. around. <laughs> they better not be having more fun than with us. <laughs> Even six weeks in, we were really tight. Yeah. yeah. We jumped yeah. right in, and we were kind of, we were helping each other float, and mm -hmm. it became a very tight that's community, true. community yeah. very quickly. Yeah. I think that's the benefit of uh, choosing this full-time uh, schedule yeah, because I you agree. Yeah. get away from all of your real life. Go <laughs> <laughs> yeah. back to being a student yeah. again right. and a student yeah. bubble. Like and a year student year. Yeah. 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 And I think as well the class sizes make a big difference yeah, to that is. as well. I mean, I know certainly some MBAs, especially in the United States and the UK, there's literally yeah. hundreds of yeah. them. So, I mean, you could be, you could do your entire MBA and not meet someone in your graduation class. Yeah. Whereas here, it's very different. We keep it, like we deliberately keep it a lot smaller. Um, and then it's all group work and the groups rotate as well. So you're not always like, you know, with the same people, but it is a really great way of making contacts. Mm -hmm. And then as I'm sure you'll find out, you know, when you're looking for jobs and all that, like the co contacts that you've made in the class are invaluable, and especially the our alumni network as well are brilliant for that and kind of just chatting to people as well. So. So yeah, it's great. I think we're ready. Yeah, I think uh, we might go to some Q and A questions now. But just before we do, um, all if you are interested in applying after this, uh, all the information and admissions criteria are on our website. But I'm also happy to answer like any specific admissions questions or anything like that, either now or afterwards. My contact details I think are in the webinar. Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you very much, Jessica, as well as the, the students for their experiences. I'm sure this was very useful already for the, uh, for the audience members that are joining. So, so, by the way, we have people joining in from different parts of the world, um, from Europe to India to Indonesia, Latin America, US, um, a lot of different different countries present today. Um, and also that shows from the questions we have already received. There's um, already some questions which I will start reading out. Um, so first of all, a question from Clifton. Uh, Clifton is uh, holding an M a BBA, sorry, from the University of Malawi. So that's an advanced diploma in business management. And he's wondering if it's necessary to uh, still uh, apply, have the GMAT done or the TOEFL exam in order to be accepted for the MBA? Uh, so that would be like I would need to see an application, but we don't offer waivers on the GMAT or the IELTS. The only way you can get a waiver on the English language is if you were, if you studied an uh, honours degree in a country where the native language is English. So UK, Australia, New Zealand, United States, Canada, co countries like that. Um, and we also don't offer waivers on the GMAT. It is a requirement. And the reason we ask for the GMAT is just to ensure that everyone's on a level playing field. So we accept people from all different backgrounds and you know different countries and everything and so it's important that you know your English language verbal skills and your quantitative skills are you know at a certain level so that for example in that foundation week when you have to do accountancy on day two you know it's more for your own protection rather than anything else and uh, so that's why we do require it. Okay great thank you Jessica. Question from Michael. Uh, Michael lives in Dublin um, and he asks do you have an open day or a master session to visit the school and know more about uh, well where you're situated and about the program? Uh, yeah, we do. Well, first thing, we will have an open evening in April. The exact dates, um, are, I think, are still being confirmed. That will be an open evening and myself will be there, current students, alumni. That will also be an MBA taste lecture. So keep an eye on the Smurfit events webpage. That will have all the details of that. Um, alternatively, you can always come in and meet with myself and uh, I'll take you for a coffee and show you the school and that's no problem at all if, if that's what you prefer to do. But April would be the next open evening. Great, thank you. I hope that helps you, Michael, connecting this online event with the offline live event possibly in April. Um, we have qu two questions from Gillian. I think the first one is basically answered due to the GMAT uh, requirement. Otherwise, yeah. let us know. 
Um, the second, he was uh, the second question. He was wondering about the MBA assessment. Are mm -hmm. there exams, or is it all a continuous uh -huh. assessment? Do you want to answer yeah. that? So, yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, we have the midterms for it depends on the course actually. To be honest, so so we do have the traditional you know midterm uh, final exam and with papers or presentations thrown in between. But then also we do have some courses that are only a week long and um, you know nine to five type um, you know, like a business day for the whole week where then we've done a paper um, or a journal for uh, you know a write like a like a yeah, reflective, reflective journal, thank you, um, as, as the assessment. So, but most, uh, I guess, yeah, so it varies. It varies, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's not all exams at the end of term or anything yeah. like that. It's it's, it's mixed assessment. Yeah. Okay, great. I hope that answers your question, Gillian. Um, question from Nathan. Nathan is wondering, is um, an internship or short-term placement in a small business an integrated part of UC the MBA? And if so, um, what are some examples of companies that students have interacted with during the MBA? I can answer that one. No, we don't do internships as part of the MBA. What I would say is, depending on where you're asking this question from, MBAs in some countries are kind of pushed more to a more junior level or and, and or also can be two years long, and therefore there's an internship as part of it. But there isn't an internship because generally the students would be more advanced. Internships in Ireland are really kind of more for undergraduate level. And secondly, it's only a 12-month program, um, so there isn't the time. there isn't the time to have an internship. But I mean, we do, as Caroline, you know, touched on, we do have very strong links with companies. And certainly I know there's, you know, you go into those companies and stuff, but it's not an internship as such. And when it comes to the careers, the career service companies that are absolutely brilliant. But again, they won't get you a job. They will help you kind of find out what you're interested in and help put you in contact with people. But they don't place you in a job. There's no placements as such. Okay, thank you. Yeah. No, just, just just one thing. Some people do or were encouraged to look for internships over okay. Christmas break. Okay. Just yeah, in yeah. case. But like yeah. no I'm not sure anyone did, but some yeah. depending on where they were coming from or what they were trying to get into after, uh, they were encouraged to do that. Okay, well that's that's good to know. So yeah, so that is I mean that is something over the Christmas break you do get about two or three weeks off and you could potentially look at if you were coming from abroad and you were staying in Ireland over Christmas, could you do a sort of short-term internship? Um, but that would, again, it would be up to you to organize. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be organized by the sort of faculty. Okay. Thank you very much. That's very useful. Um, another question from Nathan is, uh, when applying, where should I include international experience? Uh, on the resume or is it integrated into the essays or both? What would you uh, recommend? Okay. It's, it's really, if you look at the questions, you'll, you'll see what, um, you'll, you'll kind of see, for example, one of the questions is, you know, what would be your unique contribution to the class? So if you do have, you know, if you've worked in a particular team or international thing like that, you can include it in that. Also, as part of the application, you, you have to complete a short video segment. So it's a short little video sections, you'll be emailed out the link. And one of the questions there is about your global experiences. So that's kind of where you can put it in. And then also, you know, you do have to interview in, either in person or via Skype as well. So you can talk about it there as well. But I mean, it doesn't need to, I mean, if you don't have international experience, don't make up any international experience. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, question from Gillian is, um, other than the obviously the length of the uh, time it takes between a full-time and a part-time MBA, um, are there any other differences? Um, hello, I think the, yeah, we briefly reconnect the audio to the room. So it just, Got disconnected briefly, and as you can see, we're working on it. So in the meantime, I'd just like to mention to the audience um, that, uh, yeah, this is being recorded. You can ask your questions also there, and you can submit them at any time, um, and they will be answered through to, um, to by email. Um, and to both live and the recorded audience, uh, we are uh, you have a resource list available where you can click on some links as well. Um, so I'm just checking back in with the room. I don't think we have your audience. No, we don't have your audio yet. Could you check briefly on that? 
to our support. I don't hear you currently. Nope. Second. Yes, there we go. Okay. Can you hear us? Back. Can you hear us now? We're all back again. Yes, thank you. <laughs> okay. Little hiccup, which can happen. Um, likely the internet connection. So briefly, um, the question, re I'll repeat it. Uh, Gillian had the question, other than obviously the length of the time it takes to, for a full-time and part-time MBA, um, are there any other differences? Oh, and as I, okay, I'm guessing that question, you mean any difference in terms of what's actually studied? Um, so the short answer is no, the modules are the same. But the long answer is that, first off, there are the GNAM week is just for the full-time MBA. Um, you can do the other international trips, but it's kind of structured slightly differently. Um, and then the main difference would be in who's on the course. So the full-time MBA tends to be a slightly younger cohort, much more international, um, and it tends to be a lot of people who are in a career change, basically. That's why it is. And then for the executive MBA, it, they tend to be an older cohort, and it tends to be people, say, who have gotten so far in their careers, want to go to senior management or C-suite level management, and they need that extra boost, and that's why they're doing an MBA. But in terms of what's actually covered in terms of the modules and everything like that, it is it is the same. Okay, great. Okay. Good. Thank you. Um, other question from Gillian was about the international travel. Is that part also um, in the, included in the part-time MBA or only for the full-time? So as I said, so the GNM week is only for the full time and then the international travel you can do. It's optional on the executive MBA though. So what you would do is in your first year of the executive MBA, you would do the consultancy week, which is the trip in June. And then in your second year, you do the trip in yeah. the international business trip in March. I think that's how it's still currently structured. So you can do it, but they are extra. There's an extra cost and you do it in a slightly different order. But yes, you can do that. Okay that you accept for the 2020-21 intake? So we look, our, what we say is our preferred minimum score is 600. Um, so we look for a score of 600 or above. If you have a really excellent application and do a fantastic interview and have great experience and you have a score slightly below that, the admissions committee will consider it. It's done on a case-by-case -case basis, but certainly you should be aiming for over 600. And if you're interested in scholarships, you need to be aiming for like 700, really, to be honest with you. Um, but we do have, if you're based in Ireland, we do have free prep sessions and we can also put you in touch with people who do courses and things like that. So, I mean, these guys can talk more about the GMAT than I can because I haven't done it. Um, would you have any tips on the GMAT or anything like that? Oh. Study. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think sometimes the GMAT can be a bit daunting, but like you can, you can get over it. Like these guys. Even while working. Yeah. Even while working. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But it's good to give like a little bit uh, leeway in terms of studying GMAT because it's yeah. really time consuming. It took me like around three, four months to study before. Yeah, I definitely yeah. give yourself plenty of time to study the GMAT. Is would be my, my advice, <laughs> despite not talking it myself. <laughs> All right, talking about the study time, uh, in this case for the GMAT, but how about the hours per week during the MBA? Uh, what is typical? Could you indicate something about that? Mm -hmm. Any of you? Yeah. Yeah. They're working in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we get around five or six uh, modules per semester, mm -hmm. uh, and each module maybe like two hours per week. However, in this uh, MBA program, it's not just about coming to the class. It's mm -hmm. after yeah, class, it's you have, uh, just like Jessica said, yeah. Yeah, like teamwork. Like, so it, and it, it, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and we got a lot of groups here, and mostly are about reading. So even before coming to the class, you need to prepare to read the case that will be yeah. used in the, in, in the class. So it will take like maybe, yeah. Four. Like five hours per module, so, so yeah. yeah. I think we recommend it's about 60 hours a week. I don't know if you yeah. agree with that. <laughs> 65 times. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so it's, yeah. Much <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like a full, it's a, like a busy, very busy yeah. full time job, is how yes, I would describe yes. it. But the lectures themselves, they, I mean, they are Monday to Friday, and you know, and then, but it would be the group study that you'd be doing and the yeah. self study. So yeah. that's kind of where the hours add up. Sure. It is completely doable, but I do sometimes get the question people want to know can they work part time during the full time MBA? And my advice yeah. would be no, no, no. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> also, your team is not for any. Yeah. yeah. 
and that's a big part of the idea. Yeah. Team yeah. Marketing. yeah. <laughs> Okay, thank you. That hopefully explains about that part. Um, before we continue with some questions, um, actually we have a question for the audience, for everybody who's there. Um, so you on the screen now see a polling question. Uh, so we like to know if you did find out the information you required, yes or no. Obviously, we still have a couple of questions left, so maybe some of those will answer that. But so far, it would be good for us to know. And also, in terms of the general information um, given prior to the Q&A, if that was um, giving the information you were looking for. I'll leave this on the screen so you can... Um, the audience can still answer that and simply continue with the question we had from Darren. Darren was wondering, what is the average age work experience of an MBA student and also maybe the minimum age and work experience? Sorry, age, age and work experience. Age and work experience, correct. Okay, so for the full-time MBA, the average, it works out as about 29 years old and about seven years work experience. And then on the executive MBA, it's about 35 years of age and about 15 years work experience. So that's an average over the last sort of three years is what I would say. Um, so yeah. Okay, good. That is hopefully helpful to you, Darren. Question from Far Fardot, if I say that right, um, from Toronto, he's joining in. Um, are the options in the second year of the EMBA the same as those in the full-time MBA? Can you say something about that? So how it works in the EMBA is probably the, the best would be to refer to our website because I don't know the modules off the top of my head. For the executive MBA in year one, it's generally the core modules. And then the second year is a lot more focused on the optional modules. But if you're asking, are the modules the same between the full-time and the executive? Yes, they are. They're the same modules. Um, but they're obviously, they're not delivered together. So for the foundation week, all the full-time and part-timers are in foundation week together and get to know each other. But then you split, and then you're with your own class for the two years. So I think I've answered that, but if not, let me know later. Maybe. All right. Thank you. So hopefully that completes the uh, the answer. Um, another question from Ola Wasun, if I say that right, um, to ask about the confirmation of the acceptable GRE score for the MBA. I, I don't know the GRE. We do accept the GRE. I don't know exactly the breakdown off the top of my head. What I recommend you go on and do is there's a GRE to GMAT converter online mm -hmm. and put in your score to that and see what you get. Um, that, that's the best way to do it. it, and it needs to, so it needs to be the equivalent of a 600 GMAT. Okay, thank you. Uh, Levin was wondering, what are the class hours? I'm not sure this was mentioned yet. Um, and how the classes are conducted. Do you guys know We have classes throughout the day, um, depending on what course, because we actually have some in the at evening now this some semester, okay. semester yeah. because we are with some of the exactly. oh, EMEAs, yeah. but first semester was in the morning. Yeah. Nine, yeah. Some, some time between nine and four, I would say. Mm -hmm. And then the semester is similar. We have some in the morning, but some are actually a little later. Um, and we usually yeah. also have like two days off, but they usually just uh, fill it with, with some career stuff, yeah. or workshop, yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. so hopefully, hopefully yeah. that's <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Question from Adam was about the experience, um, the professional experience. I think that has been answered. Um, so if I recall, you mentioned 15 years typically for an MBA. Yeah, I mean, that's not the required year. Mm -hmm. it's but again, what I would say, rather than asking a lot of these questions now, is if, if you refer to the website and also if you want to contact me afterwards as well, um, just, um, yeah, just if there's, any, if there's any, if you want to ask private questions, you can contact me afterwards. But yeah, if you look on our website, it's actually a minimum of three years professional experience to apply. Uh, so 15 would be the average for the executive. But what I would say is if you have... Uh, less than that or more than that, please don't think, oh, I can't apply because I don't have the average. That is, it's the average. So it really ranges on the on the executive. It ranges from five or six years, the more kind of junior person, to there's somebody on the executive MBA with 30 years work experience, I think. So it is, it, it is a wide range, I would say. And then on the full time, you would have people with more experience as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, Ganesh was wondering: uh, Is there a specific deadline for applications? Uh, no, we what we do we have rolling admissions, so we have been open since the first of October, and we'll continue to accept them until really the class is full. Um, so I would recommend if you're applying to apply as soon as possible. Also, in terms of scholarships, the scholar you know there's, we do have deadlines around scholarships. So again, the information is listed on the website, but no, there's no hard deadline as such. Okay, great, thank you. So talking about the um, the applications, uh, we'd like to know from the audience if you intend to apply to this MBA. So maybe you are considering it already. Um, maybe this session helped you with some of uh, yeah co convincing arguments to do so. We hope so, of course, that that is the case. Um, we'd like you to, you to answer briefly this polling question you see on the screen, if you intend to apply for the UCD Smurfit. Maybe some of you know it already. Um, if you're not sure yet, you can indicate that. Um, thank you to hit submit, by the way, if you uh, hit your choice. I will continue with some. We have a couple more questions that came in. Um, Jessica was wondering, is there a time for joining the societies during the MBA or any extracurricular activities? I think I'm in the most. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they, they are so busy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, no, there's loads of loads of options. Yeah. We have a club night, and um, and uh, they present on different options, which are fintech, yeah, entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. social outreach, oh, social outreach, which I'm um, rugby, rugby, oh, rugby, golf, tennis. tennis. And, and golf as well, um, and you can also create your own club if you, if you want to join other people for it. So we definitely do have time for um, for societies and clubs, and they are, they are active because a lot of them won't exist without the MBA. Oh yeah. yeah. So um, so I think we're aware of that, and so we do you know put in time and effort, and it's also time spent together. And you also bring in you know the master's students and yeah. um, the executives, um, mm -hmm. MBA students as well. So, um, yeah, we definitely do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We are going to take two more questions um, from the questions that came in. There are some more, um, however, they will be answered. Um, so the, the, it will be sent to the appropriate person and we'll get back to you. And for the purpose of this Q&A, we have um, some are already been answered anyway. Um, we'll now select still two questions. One is from Matthew. Um, is asking for the students that you all, all of you have a general sense of your career path or industry that you want to pursue post the MBA? Um, and do you feel it's important or do you think that students have the time to figure out their own direction over the course of the program? Could you briefly say something about this, each of you? That's actually the purpose of this MBA year. You're taking one year off your busy schedule and life. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, like what, what do you do in the future? So a lot of us maybe do not have a clear uh, clear decision on what we're going to do afterwards, but as we are in the program, it's just getting clearer and clearer. Yeah. So that's what you need to figure out here. Yeah. And not only do we need to figure it out, but we have guidance uh, in, with the coaches and the mentors and each other. Mm -hmm. I came in thinking I want to do digital marketing. Mm -hmm. and, um, Definitely diverted from that very quickly, yeah. um, but still no no set path. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think anyone has a set path. No, I mean we're here to focus on our professional development as well. So, and, and we, uh, you know, we do. There's so much guidance in regards to that. So, so I mean, some people know what they want to do, and that changes along the way. Some people don't know what to be, they they want to do, um, and they figure it out along the way. So it, it's not. I mean, it's not something that you should have stressed about. I think it's you know you've made the decision to take this career break. And you know you're invested in it, and I think you you will figure it out. You know, and that there's so much yeah. support. And, and maybe to give uh, give a little bit of personal stories, like when I came here, uh, I always look into uh, into advancing the career in the financial services because that's the only world that I know. But now after I come here, I started from blank canvas, and I decided to pursue consulting afterwards. So it's like uh, a bit of yeah, a, a little bit. 
a different path that you will never know because you doesn't have the chance to explore. Yeah. And now is the best time for you to yeah. think about what you. Yeah, you taking the time out to yeah, and actually speaking to experts here, like in the career, who right, yeah. can talk to you and say, well, have you ever thought about X? Yeah. And probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. I just want one more point is, you know, as a solicitor, I think as if you come from a certain profession, you're not aware of what else exists out there because you, you know other professions, like I know what a doctor does, a pharmacist does, you know, so it's also being exposed to so much, yeah. you know, to so much more and, and, and just having an awareness of what's out there and what you can apply your skills to. Great. Perfect. Great. Yeah. Thank you very much. I think that's very useful and to hear your actual experiences. So some of the students uh, that are online, they might be in a similar similar time as you were before choosing this MBA. Um, so we'd like to actually hear from the audience before we go to the last question about what are the deciding factors for you in the, your choice of the MBA. So you've heard different reasons um, and, and, and you probably have your own uh, personal reason to choose for an MBA. What are you? What are some deciding factor for you in choosing? Possibly you see these Smurfits. Yes. Um, this question is on the screen. You can write in this question. Um, so I'll leave it open for a little bit, and we'd like to hear a bit what some of these deciding factors are. So you've heard probably some. Um, now, in terms of uh, possibly deciding factor, uh, of course, for an MBA can also be an improved position um, or a better position in the job market. Um, in terms of that, uh, there's a question from Piyush. Um, please, could you shed some light on the current post-MBA market conditions for international candidates, especially in Ireland or even broader in the, in the, in the UK? Um, I can't, well, I can't talk about the UK, to be honest with you. Um, I mean, I can only say generally I don't work in the careers department, but I mean, the economy here is very strong at the moment, um, and lots of companies are looking for employees. I don't think there's any bias towards non, you know, non-Irish hires. It's not something that I've I know of or have been made aware of. And I know that you know our employment rate after post MBA is very high. It's very close for our MSc students as well. Like you know, they find great employment very quickly. And especially, I would say, especially if you're interested in something like tech, kind of more technical, you know, with Google and Facebook and Microsoft being here, they would have a lot of you know kind of entry level positions as well, or like post MBA positions. So I mean, I do think it's it's like it's a very competitive market at the moment, and there's lots of employment out there. So I don't know if you guys have been looking or um, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I've gone to a few um, chats with people uh, alumni. Yeah. And uh, specifically, again, in the tech, um, a lot of companies are, you know, growing, but yeah. some are even doubling their size yeah. in, in Dublin. So, yeah, the positions are, they, they have them and they're extending them as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Great. Great. Well, I think that sums it up very well. Um, I do take one question more because they were asked uh, various times. And that was about the GMAT still. Um, asking uh, some people, I wondered about the last possible date they can submit their GMAT score. So you would need to, so you can apply without the GMAT. And if you were made an offer, it would be called a conditional offer. And then if you accepted, you would be at what's called conditional accept. And the condition is obviously meeting the GMAT. I mean, it depends where you're applying from. You can't get your visa on, like, until you have a full confirmed offer and you won't get your full confirmed offer until you've met that GMAT requirement. So say, for example, if you're applying from somewhere, say like India or China, you would you would need to have your GMAT sat and the score sent into us by, I mean, I would say early June at the absolute latest because it can take six weeks or more to get a visa. If you're applying from Ireland, it's obviously a bit easier. If you're, you know, if you can, if you're living in the country and you're not worried about accommodation, we can really accept it up until sort of like end of July time. But really by then we need to know because the course starts on the 31st of August and we need to know who's going to be in the class. So as, cause as we've mentioned several times, there's a huge amount of group work and like, a huge amount of work goes into that group before the before the course even starts because they look at different backgrounds, different experiences, and they try to make sure that the groups are you know very mixed. So we basically need to know who is coming you know as far in advance as possible. So really, yeah, you would need to get your GMAT done as soon as possible. It's not it's not allowed to start the course without a GMAT. You have to have met your conditions well before then. Okay, great. Thank you, Jessica. I hope that uh, clarified it for um, some of the <laughs> questions that came in. 
And basically, with that, I'd like to conclude this uh, session for now. Um, you can still write any last question you may have. They will be sent uh, to the probably the admission staff who will deal with uh, these questions and come back to you. Um, also, just to mention, you have the resource list on your, I believe it should be your right side of the panel of your um, screen, where you can click on through to the um, admission page and uh, uh, find out more information as well. So from my side, I'd like to thank everybody um, for joining. First of all, the audience. Uh, we had uh, people from, uh, as mentioned, various countries worldwide joining today's session. So that was great to see. Um, and I hope this was uh, giving you the information you were looking for. Um, I think we did quite a good job. And I say we as <laughs> in the students and the, and the MBA admissions manager, Jessica, thank you all for your um, personal uh, yeah, touch on this, and uh, it's very useful, uh, your experiences, and um, I think that was uh, very useful for students to decide on possibly in their important career step that they might uh, want to do. And with that, as mentioned, we'll conclude the session. Um, Jessica, I'd like to maybe give you the last word to just finish it off, anything you want to say to the uh, potential future MBA audience. <laughs> Um, I would just hope that you found today useful. Uh, it, we really kind of wanted to concentrate more on the student experiences rather than the actual admissions process. So if you mm -hmm. do have any particular questions around that, absolutely get in touch with me. Um, we, and we have loads of uh, information on our website and everything like that. I think the best advice to potential students is to you know, do a lot of research. We have a MBA student blog, which is a really good source of information as well. So I recommend checking that out. And yeah, if you have any questions at all, just get in touch with me and I'm always happy to help. Great. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. 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 Bye.